Hello and welcome to lecture 25 of the course Computational Complexity. Uh, today we are going to see an interesting theorem called the Baker-Gill-Solovey theorem. So Baker, Gill and Solovey proved in 1975. Um, so let, let's first uh, describe the motivation and then I'll state the theorem. Right. The thing is that we have seen uh, time hierarchy theorem, space hierarchy theorem. So the undecidability of the halting problem, all of this were proved using diagonalization. And most diagonalization proofs relativize. So what do I mean by relativize? Uh, is that uh, they can be extended to a setting where the Turing machines use oracles as well. Right? In, in other words, if there is a proof that shows that uh, a complexity class is, con is strictly contained in another complexity class, right? Let's say C1 is subset but not equal to C2, right? Then the same proof can be extended to show that C1 with the oracle A is subset but not equal to C2 to the oracle A for any oracle A, right? So again, this is very important. So this is this will be true for any oracle that you choose. This because the, the I'll explain the reasons below. Right, because uh, the thing is that proofs that that uh, that use diagonalization um, basically relies on two things. Uh, one is that uh, we need to be able to uh, encode the the Turing machine into some strings. Right, so we usually say things like uh, uh, sorry, given given the description of a Turing machine M, then uh, you run the Turing machine M on its own description and then flip the output, right? This is what this is what you typically do in the case of diagonalization. And then this, this will be part of a uh, description of a Turing machine, let's say call it D, right? So D may have other things. And then you ask questions like what happens when D is fed its own description and then you arrive at a contradiction, right? This is how proofs uh, involved in diagonalization uh, work, halting problem, uh, space hierarchy, everything, right? There are some other things like how much time, how much space, then you, then you curtail it, truncate it and so on, right? So basically it, it, it relies on the notion uh, of uh, interpreting or encoding a Turing machine as a string and reading a string as both the description of a Turing machine as well as the input to the above mentioned Turing machine or to some Turing machine, right? And the second thing that, uh, that uh, proofs using diagonalization need is the capability to simulate one Turing machine uh, using another Turing machine. So you, we, the proofs have uh, things like, again, what I just said, we say things like you run M on its own description. So Basically, the Turing machine that we have, let, I earlier called it D. So D should be able to run M for any M, right? So if M1 is given, it should be able to run M1. So basically, the Turing machine D has to be, has to have the capability of running, simulating any other Turing machine, right? So both of these uh, are, uh, are required and essential for uh, a diagonalization proof. And uh, both of these can be, well be extended to Oracle Turing machines as well. Because if you can simulate a Turing machine, then you can also simulate an Oracle Turing machine, right? Because all the only new thing that we have for an Oracle Turing machine is the fact that there are some Oracle to calls to be made. So now Oracle calls is like checking the membership. And this part can also be included in the simulation, right? Checking the membership and then, then, uh, then answering yes or no. Um, again, if necessary, it can be done by the simulating machine as well. Second is the encoding of Turing machine into strings. Again, this can be uh, also done with, uh, for Oracle Turing machines because as I uh, described in the, one of the previous lectures, Oracle Turing machines uh, are just like any other Turing machines, but they have three special states, uh, Q query, Q yes, Q no, and then an extra tape. So it, it is well, uh, fits well within the framework of um, of any, uh, any other Turing machine. So the, the uh, you can have a similar encoding and uh, it can be interpreted by another Turing machine. So both of these 
uh, encoding as well as simulation uh, can be done for the oracle turing machines so any so consequently any proof that can be that uses diagonalization you could just uh, just, just uh, mildly tweak the, the Turing machines involved in those proofs and get a proof for the relat relativized version of the classes as well. So, if, if there is a proof that says a complexity class C1 is contained in complexity class C2, you can uh, use the same uh, uh, using diagonalization, you can use the same proof to show that C1 to the oracle A is contained in C2 to the oracle A. If it says that C1 is not contained in C2, then again same proof works to show that C1 to the A is not contained in C2 to the A. So, whatever you say between C1 and C2, it relativizes, meaning it can be set for C1 to the A and C2 to the A, right. This is the, uh, this is the main, uh, this is what relativization means, right. This holds because both of these A and B, uh, encoding and uh, simulation uh, can be uh, uh, hold even for oracle turing machines right so this is the property of relativization 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 means even upon uh, modifying the turing machine to include oracles it should uh, the statements should should hold good so what this means is that uh, so let's try to understand the consequences so one may wonder, like because we saw p versus uh, because we saw time hierarchy, space hierarchy, etc., undecidability, right? Which which seem to be big problems in the case of uh, uh, computability theory. So now, can one possibly solve p versus n p using diagonalization? It's a very natural question that somebody may ask. Can we use some diagonalization technique, very smart, very creative, to show that p is equal to n p or p is not equal to n p, right? Uh, so, one thing to note is that because of the relativization thing that we just noted, uh, if there is a proof that p is equal to np, suppose p is equal to np, if there is a proof that uses diagonalization to show that p is equal to np, then the same proof should extend or should relativize to show that p to the a is equal to the is equal to np to the a for any oracle a. If there is a proof that shows that uh, p is not equal to np using a diagonalization, then that should also relativize, meaning it should extend to the statement that p to the a is not equal to np to the a for any oracle a, right? For any oracle a. So this is what uh, if there were there was a there was there was a way to settle p versus np using diagonalization, then the same statement should hold good even with oracles. And what Baker, Gill and Soloway showed in 1975 is that p versus np cannot be resolved using diagonalization in either way, p equal to np is also not possible, p not equal to np is not also not possible. How did they do that? They showed two oracles a and b such that uh, with respect to a, p to the a is equal to np to the a and p to the b is not equal to np to the b. So, if, if someone showed, uh, anyway, it is written above, if somebody showed that p is not equal to np using diagonalization, then you should be able to uh, relativize, meaning p to the a will be not equal to np to the a for all oracles, right. But here we have an oracle that shows that p to the a is equal to np to the a. We have an oracle where p to the a is equal to np to the a. So, that rules out a proof of p not equal to np using diagonalization. Similarly, if there was a proof, if there is a proof for p equal to np using diagonalization, right, then that should also relativize, meaning it should extend to p b equal to n p to the b for all oracles b. However, Baker, Gill and Soloway showed another oracle b 
such that PB is not equal to NP to the B. So therefore, you cannot show that P equal to NP using diagonalization as well. So you cannot solve it P equal to NP, you also cannot solve P not equal to NP using diagonalization. Hence, uh, you cannot settle P versus NP using diagonalization. This was the result of Baker, Gill and Solovey. Right? So basically they ruled out, told people don't even try a diagonalization in an attempt to solve P versus NP. Such diagonalization alone is not going to be enough because, because of this. Right? So it's, it's very, very interesting. Right? So uh, it is not a proof that P equal to NP, it's not a proof that P not equal to NP. It is a proof that shows that a certain technique to, to, to resolve the problem will not work. Right? So, it, so it, it like many as I have said before, many complexity theorists have spent a lot of time and effort and, and that too very intelligent people have spent a lot of time on the P versus NP question. So even this kind of an input, right? don't try this approach, even that is helpful. But this is not just some random statement, don't try this approach. It's actually a statement backed up with a uh, perfectly logical and correct proof that if you try this, you will not succeed because of this and this reasons, right? So that way it's very, very, uh, very interesting result, right? Perhaps the first result of this type, this, this, this proof attempt or this proof approach or this proof technique does not work, right? So let's see the, the first part of the proof uh, first, uh, which is an oracle A such that P to the A is equal to NP to the A, right? So the basic idea is to make A, so you want an oracle such that so we don't know what P and NP, how they relate, right? We, 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 it may be equal, it may be a proper subset, okay? So now how, how to, what kind of A will make P to the A equal to NP to the A? So the idea is to make A very powerful, right? You make it so powerful that it doesn't matter what kind of uh, base machine is asking queries. So even if the one has non-determinism, one does not, even then um, the, the oracle is so powerful that it, it, it doesn't really matter if the base machine had non-determinism non or not. Right? So that is the idea. So to make A very powerful. Right? So the, the, the language that I am describing is uh, something that runs in exponential time. Okay? So what is x time? So the complexity class x time or sometimes in denoted exp, I have not defined this before in this course, is the, the, the union of all d time 2 power n power k, right? So if I had d time n power k, it would, have, it would be polynomial time. 2 power n power k means it's the, the exponent is polynomial, so it's exponential time, right? So this is x, right? Uh, so this is exp and the language uh, and the oracle or the language a is uh, m x 1 power n okay 1 power n just means n ones so where m is a description of a turing machine x is description is some string and 1 power n is well just n ones um, uh, um, and, and what is the language? The set of all such three tuples or uh, three tuples where m outputs 1 or maybe you could say m accepts uh, on x uh, given on x within 2 power n steps. Right? So, so where 2 power n steps is the number of steps and that is so and that is given by 1 power n. 1 power n meaning you are given n in unary. Right? So, this is just 1 power n is nothing but n in unary, right? So, you are given n in unary and the language is that m should output 1 on the input x within 2 power n steps, okay? m should output 1 on x within 2 power n steps. And uh, first of all, notice that this language is in exponential time. Why is that? Because we could simulate m for 2 power n steps on x, right? On the input x for 2 power n steps. 
so it it may take maybe roughly order two power n steps maybe two power n multiplied by some constant or some something like that and uh, the in right so and and the input length right input length is bigger than n right so the input length is the entire uh, is basically equal to the the size of the description of m right plus length of x plus n so this is certainly bigger than n or at least n and it runs in 2 power n steps so which means that the running time is 2 power n which is which, which is less than exponential time or at most exponential time right so but in 2 power n steps so whatever so whether it outputs 1 or not we can decide and then we can simulate and respond right so a itself is an exponential time okay now what we will show is that p power a or p to the a and np to the a are both equal to x okay let's see why so first of all we will show that x is contained in p to the a so as i have said in the previous lecture we take an arbitrary so whenever we have a containment like this to show we take an arbitrary language from the left hand side and show that this belongs to the right hand side so let l be in arbitrary lang an arbitrary language in x time okay which means there is a x time decider for l so let that decider be m and let m run in 2 power n power k time right this is what x time was 2 power n power k should be the running time complexity right so n be the uh, so basically it runs in it's also deterministic time right not not deterministic because it's in p to, uh, it, it is in x time right and to decide l in p to the a right uh, again this is p to the a right so which means it's a polynomial time machine that has the language a as an oracle so it we can ask questions of the form m x 1 power n right so what we can do so whether m runs okay we know m runs in 2 power n power k time so we, we can just give it uh, uh, we can just ask the oracle does it does it give the right answer in 2 power n power k time so to 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 ask this you need to ask uh, you need to um, give n power k in unary that is n n power k once you have to give and the description of the turing machine m and the input x so to decide whether x is in l or not we give m comma x comma 1 power n power k which is just n power k in unary to the oracle right so if it if if m accepts x in 2 power n power k time then uh, the oracle will respond yes otherwise it will respond no and that is it. So uh, and what does the uh, p to the a machine actually the, the, the base machine have to do? The base machine just has to just, just write down this 1 uh, m x 1 power, uh, 1 power n power k in the tape in the query tape and this takes this can certainly be done in polynomial time right because uh, yeah n power k is what it has to write and m and x are fixed x is the input right so this can be done right hence um, so this this uh, so where uh, or, or, in fact this is actually a many one reduction right so this is actually a many one reduction why because it's it's like to decide whether x is in l you are just making a call to uh, making a call to the a oracle um, with the with the help of a polynomial time running uh, machine right so we just make one query so it's a mini one reduction as well right? you can view it as a mini one reduction so a language an arbitrary language in x time is contained in a a machine that uh, a p to the a machine second part is to show that np to the a is contained in x time okay so this is slightly more involved let's see the proof 
So let n be the NP machine, right? So there is NP to the A, right? So the base machine be n. Suppose, so it's an NP machine. So it runs in polynomial time, not deterministic polynomial time. Suppose the running time is n power k. Now, as you may recall, right? So when you have a non-deterministic machine, there are several possible computation paths, right? And then, right, so, right, so this, is, this is how the structure looks like. What is the number of computation paths? Uh, we do not know, but uh, let B be the branching factor from in this figure, I think four is a maximum branching factor. Let, if the max branching factor is B, um, which means the number of children in this computation tree, maximum number of children for any node in this computation tree, then it can have at most b power height and the height is the, the time taken and in, in which, which in this case is n power k. So b power height is b power n power k computation paths, right? And it has that many computation paths, which means uh, b power n power k can also be written as 2 power log b multiplied by n power k, right. So that many computation paths are there, right. So all that we will, so we need to show that this is contained in exp, right. So some, consider some language in np to the a, that has to be shown to be contained in exp, right. So now there is an np machine which has at most 2 power uh, uh, log b times n power k, which is in which, right, which is an exponential quantity, and we could use the exp time machine to uh, to just run each or go through each of these paths, right? So there are that b power n power k paths and each of length n power k. So uh, it is it is exp time. It is upper bounded by exp time, right? The only thing is that it is not simply an np machine, but it is also an np machine with a a oracle, right? So now it may encounter, let us say at this, this particular point, it may say now query, query A, right? So it is not just not, not just the matter of uh, counting down each computation paths, it may say query A, it may say query A, many places, right? So this queries also have to be performed, but the X prime machine does not have access to any oracle, which means it has to actually run the uh, run the decider for a or maybe check for the membership in a by its own means but as i have already uh, as we have already seen the the language a itself is in exp right so as we have already seen a itself is in exp so when there is a need to query a what can be done by the exp prime machine is to is to simply run the exponential time uh, algorithm for A and then output the uh, answer. And then the, the X prime machine can continue, continue the simulation of the non-deterministic machine. So all that one does or the X prime machine does is to run through each of these paths in the computation tree and we know there are at most exponentially many paths, in fact 2 power log b multiplied by n power k with and you may encounter uh, the A queries, but when you encounter the A queries, all that one has to do is to run the X prime decider, which is also okay. So, and, and that will be another exponential quantity, the time taken for that, but multiplication of two exponential quantities is also okay. That will also be another exponential time quantity. So, whenever, uh, so one, now N can be simulated by an X prime machine, maybe let us call it E. So, it can run through each computation path. And whenever there is an A oracle call, right, each computation path, and then whenever there is an oracle call to A, then E can simulate the A decider, right, right. I have written simulate A, so I meant deci decider for A as well. Since A is a cell itself in X prime, thus uh, E can simulate n power A in exponential time. This means that uh, n power A, an arbitrary language in n power A sorry, not n power a, uh, n power a, right. So, so an arbitrary language in uh, np power a is contained in exp, right. So we have shown first that exp is contained in polynomial p to the a, 
then we have shown that NP to the A is an exp, right? And finally, we have this this connection also simply because uh, P is a uh, subset of NP. So, P to the A will also be a subset of NP to the A, right? It, whether it is a strict subset or not, we do not know, but we do not need to know that because we have a chain of containments, right? X contained in P to the A, contained in NP to the A, contained in X. So, we have a chain of containments where the left hand side and the right hand side are the same, right? So, what if just, just to understand, what if you had an e chain of equality, inequalities like uh, which says that 3 is less than or equal to x just in terms of numbers, right? Less than or equal to x, less than or equal to y, less than or equal to 3. This would, th there is only way to, there is only one way to make all this true. The one way is that x and y are both equal to 3. Similarly, there is only one way to make all this true. It is that p power a and n p power a are equal and equal to x. Hence, p power a equal to n p power a, which is what we wanted. We wanted an oracle a such that p power a equal to n p power a. And again, uh, just to just to remind you, this this rules out any oracle. Uh, sorry, any proof of, that shows that p not equal to n p using diagonalization. Um, I will just summarize very quickly. Uh, the, the idea is to, uh, we have to show p power a equal to n p power a. The idea is to make a powerful so that the base machine does not, uh, the, the, the limitations of the base machine does not come into picture. First of all, exponential time is contained in p power a because you could just simply query a once uh, and get the answer. And n p power a is contained in exponential time because you could simply run through all the computation paths in exponential time and whenever there is an A oracle query, that query also can be performed in exponential time. Hence, n p power a is contained in exponential time and obviously p power a is contained in n p power a because it is a subclass. Hence, it follows that n p power a equal to p power a. Um, there is one more thing I just wanted to say uh, is that instead of uh, so, here we had an x time language A, right? x time oracle A. Uh, another thing that works is a uh, p space complete language like uh, TQBF, right? TQBF also works. Uh, and the proof outline is pretty much the same. So, you could show that NP power TQBF is contained in p space and uh, p space is contained in p power TQBF. Uh, and the, 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 and, and then the finally, we have the sandwich equation, p, uh, p space is contained in t, uh, p power t qbf contained in p, and p power t qbf contained in t, p space again. So, it has to be the case that p power t qbf equal to n p power t qbf. So, a equal to t qbf also works, uh, but I would leave it to you to work out the details of this particular proof, right. Uh, so, uh, with that, I will think I will conclude this uh, this lecture part because, and I will uh, I will show the oracle B that for which p power b is not equal to n p power b in the next lecture.